This um, lesson is one of our most probably kind of confusing, maybe challenging lessons, but it's also so much fun too. So we talk about terms here. That is one of the, the big words that you're going to hear that repeated so much today. And um, you've heard it actually before. Uh, for example, if we had the fraction 2 6, we reduce it to lowest terms, it is 1 third. So you've heard that word before, terms. Well, now we're going to um, use it in algebra and algebraic expressions, algebraic equations or expressions. And um, here's a real easy example. Let's say we had negative 2x. This would be just one term. Even though we have a number and we have a variable, this is considered one term. And we would call it a monomial. Two terms has another name, and we use the same base name. It's a binomial. Two terms would be, this would be an example, a squared minus 4b squared. Two terms. This is one term. This is another term. We can kind of separate it out, and they're different terms. And because they look different, all right? So this, this would be uh, two different terms. Let me show you an example of three terms. This is called a trinomial. Tri meaning three, trinomial. Three terms, an example like that would be three x squared minus x minus four. Three different terms. Even though we have an x here, and x, but if this is an x squared, this is just a plain x. Let me do that slash mark again to show you that we separate these terms. This would be one term here. This is a different term, and this is another term. Notice that this has a number in front of the variable. This one doesn't have a number in front of the variable, but it's understood that when there is no number in front of the variable, like for example this one, it's to be a 1 because we know that, well in this case it would be a negative 1, we know that negative 1 times x would give you that negative x or negative 1x. Take this one right up here. That is a squared. Again, we understand that that is a 1 in front of there. 1 times a squared would give you that a squared. It's not written, but it's just understood there. Notice that this has a number here. It's actually the negative 4 um, that goes with that term. But the main thing that I want you to understand for just right here is, is that one term is called a monomial. That would be one term. Binomial, two different terms. And a trinomial, three different terms. In this example right here, three different terms. This would be a trinomial. We understand that this has 3x squared minus x minus 4. This 4 is called a constant. Notice that's a variable because it changes. We don't know what x is. We could give a value for x, but we don't know what it is right now. And so that's why it's a variable. It varies. Where this is a constant, it is a 4. It's actually a negative 4 because that sign that's in front of it goes to that 4. Just like that sign goes to that x. Now, we, as we've done in the past, anytime we've seen a subtraction sign, we've always changed it to addition and the next number to its opposite. You can do that or you can leave them the same. Your option. I'm going to teach both ways. The next thing that we're going to do, you knew we had to step up a little bit, is that we're going to collect like terms. And just the way that this sentence is stated, collect like terms, or this phrase is collect like terms, we're going to collect things that look alike. Okay, so for example, if we had 3x plus 3 minus 1, we could collect like terms. 
notice that we have this plus 3 here and we have this minus 1 here. These two we can actually simplify and collect. We can combine them so we can simplify our, um, our expression here. Plus 3 minus 1 or again if you wanted to change that to addition and the next number to its opposite, it's going to be the same answer. 3 minus 1 would be 2. 3 plus a negative 1 is going to be a 2, a positive 2. And then we can't forget about that, that 3x plus 2. This is in its simplest form. We can't combine it anymore because this means 3 times x, our variable, we don't know what that is, and then, um, uh, then plus 2. So that would be in simplest terms. We collected and combined what we could. There was no x's to combine. So that is our phrase, and that is, we're done with that. That would be simplifying. Let's do a little bit more difficult problem. Let's do a little bit more com um, complex. Let's say that we have 3x plus y plus x minus y. Notice there's four different terms here, but we can collect the like ones. Actually, they're not different. There are some that are alike, and that's what we're going to do. That's the whole purpose of this lesson is to collect the like terms. Now remember what I said before, when there is no number in front of there, like we have a 3 here, we don't have any numbers in front of theirs, it's just understood that it's like a 1 in here. And if you want to put a 1 there or you remember that it's a 1, that's fine. But it's like there's a 1 here. So notice that we have the 3x here. I'm just going to circle that. And I'm going to look through my phrase to see if I see any other, my expression, if I see any other x's here. There's a y, there's an x. This is a like term. I'm going to circle it. Notice I circle the, um, the operation sign in front of there too. It's always good to do that because that's what it goes with. We can collect those. So if you have three x's and you add another x in there, three plus one is four, four x. Three x plus one x. If you have three x's and one x, combine it, you have four x. Now we're going to combine the y's. I'm going to put a square around there just because they're different and I'd like a different shape here. We have a plus 1y and then a minus 1y. Well, what is that equal to? That equals to 0. 0 times y would be 0. So then plus 0. So it simplifies to just 4x. So notice this expression here simplified to our 4x down here. Let's do a different problem. We get 3x plus 2x squared plus 4 plus x squared minus x minus 1. Now we could rewrite this and, and combine our things, but I kind of like doing the shapes. I think that's a little bit more fun. So let's just go to the first term. Let's just put a circle around it. Do we see any other x's in here? Now I see an x here, but notice that that's squared. This is not a like term. I need to find just a plain x here. So there's an x squared, that's not it. I see a four, I see another x squared. Ah, here's another x. This would be a like term. Again, I am combining that operation with that x. Now remember, I'm combining these terms, so if I have 3x minus x, remember that that's like a 1 in there, that would be a 2x. So 3x minus x would be a 2x. So 2x. So 3x minus 1x would be a 2x. Now I'm going to look at this 2x squared. Do we see any like terms for that? That doesn't have an x squared to it. It has to be exactly the same thing. That is exactly the same thing without the 2, but it's the, the same term having that x squared. I can combine those. If I have 2x squared plus an x squared, how many x squareds do I have? I have 3. I have 3x squared. 3x squared. Remember, there's like a 1 there. 2 plus 1 equals our 3. Notice the variable doesn't change. That part of the term doesn't change. Just the numerical coefficient, the number part in the front. Now we have one more term here. We have this 4 here and this negative 1 here. 4 minus 1 is 3. 
positive 3. 4 plus a negative 1, still positive 3. Okay. Notice that we have three different terms here. This is a trinomial. It cannot be simplified anymore. That is in its simplest form. The only thing that we could do if we wanted to to be more proper is to, to rearrange the, the term so that we have the highest one with the, um, the biggest exponent. That would go first. It's kind of like the proper way of doing it. So we put that one first, then that one would be, get, would be next and then our constant, the three would be last. So this would be, this would be the better answer. This is a, a correct answer. This would just be a better answer. But that is, that's how you do that. That's how you collect those like terms. Let's do one more. Let's do one of the practice problems. Let's do F in the practice set. And F is five XY minus x plus xy minus 2x. Again, we're looking for things that have to be exactly the same. So I'm going to circle that 5xy. I need to look for something that has an xy to it. This has an x, but not an xy. This has an xy. So I combine that. 5xy plus xy would be 6xy. We have five, and remember that's like a one in front of it, so it makes six, six xy's. Then I'm gonna put a square around that. Remember I take that, that operation that's right in front of it with that one, and notice that I have a negative x, and I have or a minus x and a minus two x. Combining those, I have a minus three x. Notice that those terms are alike there. And remember, that's like a 1 in front of it. So a negative 1 plus a negative 2 is a negative 3. And so we have combined those. That is in its simplest form. It cannot be combined anymore. This is as simple as it gets. So this would be its in simple form. And because this has an x, y, and this is an x, it is in order. That would be in the proper order as well. Well, good luck in doing this lesson, and um, I, hope, um, I hope you understood.